Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking out a reanimate shadow for Unlimited. We are doing Unlimited week this week where pretty much every single video should be Unlimited. We may have one rotation video just to mix it up in there just a little bit but pretty much this entire week is looking to be Unlimited decks in celebration of the Unlimited Grand Prix which everyone hopefully is giving a go. So. This is actually quite a fun deck. This is a deck that AutoAim had posted on his Twitter, which I'm sure you can go and check out. I'll leave a link to his Twitter in the description below so you can go check that out. He did actually go 5-0 with this deck. Personally, I haven't found it that great, but I have started to get the hang of it. I think it's just got a little bit of a learning curve to work out exactly what plays are the best to go with, and as you'll see in my few gameplays, they aren't exactly perfect all the time, so definitely something I am getting to learn. I haven't had much messing around with the new cards that were bought in for for reanimate. Um, last time I played reanimate of course it was basically just so death reap life and death dragon caller continually pumping Zeus whereas now especially in unlimited you're mostly using Sidwin and even the new Sidwin eternity hunter to really push it so it's one of the few cards I didn't really have much of so crafted one up specifically whoops sorry for that deck so we'll get right into it and take a look. So our first matchup is against Sword. Sword is just one of those matchups. If you get severely out aggroed, it's a little hard to come back, but if you can control that early game pressure, make it to turn five and seven kind of ranges, you can usually control the board enough to really get to your Zeus turns, which will then allow you to swarm quite hard. Of course, the start being the hardest part to control, especially when you start off with a hand like this, which doesn't really give you many options. Of course, Sword having no turn 1 play definitely helps us out a little bit, and Lurching Corpse is also going to give us a way to deal with at least something in their early game. Lux Solar Lance of Vogue coming down for the opponent of 1-2 gold. Draw a commander, not really a problem for us. We should pretty easily deal with that with this Lurching Corpse. Draw a couple of cards and start setting up that Necromancy. The only things in this deck that use Necromancy are, I think, the Soul Squasher and the Corpse Lord, which with the Corpse Lord buff is actually quite good. I've actually enjoyed playing that a few times and it's definitely a fun one to throw down. Like I said, I haven't found myself great success with this deck. I've won a few games out of uh, about 10, so it's not the worst deck, not the best deck, at least from what I've tested. But as I said, as I've gotten used to the deck, it's definitely getting easier to tell where good players and where bad players. So just keeping that in mind if you do plan to play this deck. So they do go for the healing. And we get a slight ping off them. It's not really anything too impressive that we have left. We have the Everdark Strix to remove this Zeus, but not really anything else too crazy. Luckily with Double Zombie Party though, we can at least get rid of the 4 too effectively without having to spend anything else. I could have went straight for the Ser Ceres, which could have been a better play, but I really wanted to make sure that the Everdark got off so that I could remove that Zeus from my hand and have it just set up, ready to go. I have contemplated whether Burial Riding Zeus is always the best play and maybe Underworld Watchman might be an okay one to go with as sometimes I feel like I want Underworld Watchman especially in aggro matches over Zeus sometimes mainly because the healing makes a huge difference if your opponent does swarm you but in this matchup we have actually done fairly well to hold our ground. So Ceres finally getting to see herself on the board I did spend all my evolves, not not getting said when early really affects you. Normally I tend to try and hold at least one evolve so I can get that Zeus summon. Optimally you want two. I have considered maybe Dark Angel Olivia, but I think that's a little late. Being a nine drop, it makes it a little hard to use without basically just screwing up your hand. So Holy Bear Knight, gonna be used to trade into my Ceres. But they don't really have much else. Everything is on one health. They don't really have any way to effectively deal with anything. So this Bellinus is going to kill at least two followers, guaranteed. And of course I draw Sidwin now when I just used my Evolve last turn. But at least we can set up this Underworld Watchman, which is really going to absorb some of their followers here. Being able to just absorb their board is really beneficial. Fortunately, we don't get any heal out of it, but considering we only lost 4 health total so far, it's just great that we absorb so much damage from it in general. Being able to just kill 4 followers. Lucky for me, zombie party. Don't really need anything else at this point. 
being able to just throw a bunch of 2-2s to the board really limit what the opponent can play. Of course, Dark Sable Melissa is actually a really good one to play when you're in a board state like this, so definitely commend them on that. Of course, I don't have much else, so I do go for the So Death Brief Life, mainly just trying to have something set up against this 6-7 that really makes it hard for them to do much. Unfortunately, Vals being able to get a banishment is going to cripple this 4-5. I have considered um, incorporating a Mordecai somewhere. I I feel like Corpse Lord is good, but a Mordecai is almost as good as Zeus when it comes to stuff. But Banishment is pretty popular now, especially in Swords, so who knows? It's definitely something I'd love to try though, so don't be surprised if that kind of deck pops up eventually too. So Round Table, Flooding the Board, Luminous Mage as well. Of course, they want a way to deal with this Zeus while at the same time dealing with everything else. Not so lucky for them though, we have some crazy cards coming up next with Sodeth Root Life and Corpse Lord of Woe both being playable. And we can remove most of the cards from this board. Actually, I think we can remove everything with this Zeus play. So, Sodeth Root Life into Zeus. And a very, very nice Corpse Lord to go along with it. So with an absolute removal of the board, a really big ward, and basically an immortal follower unless they get another banishment off. It's a pretty crazy board to deal with. Especially for an aggressive deck. Fangblade isn't a bad option though, being able to remove Zeus and deal damage to my face. And I've only got 10 damage, so the Fangblade Flare, if they have another one, isn't going to be enough to kill me, which is great. At least not on its own, it will require something else to really deal that last bit of damage. But Animated Corp 4 Woe, great looking, so really happy. I should have foreseen this. So next up we are against Forest. Forest is another extremely powerful deck in rotation, not sorry, in unlimited. I'm so used to doing rotation videos that it's just ingrained in my brain at this point. But yes, unlimited. Unlimited Forest, extremely powerful. I mean, when you have stuff like Roach in decks, it's just absolutely crushing. Especially with how many good aggro cards Forest has been packing in decks lately. But we start off pretty solid. We've got pretty much a perfect setup. Gloomy Necromancer to get rid of Zeus and Sedwin on curve. And now a Corpse Lord Woe that could take advantage of turn 4. To really just fill the board up a little bit. The Everdark Strix though, not so great unless we get another card to get rid of because I don't really want to sacrifice anything in my hand for this Everdark. And I don't really want to get rid of Ceres either, because I'm not going to be able to resummon those with Sedwin here, and I don't really want to use anything else. So at the moment, just relying on this 2-1, but I think a Ceres play turn 4 is really going to be hard on this first player. Nothing can trade into this currently, so it will require at least using an Evolve to remove the Ceres, and negates their last turn. So unless they have Avoid. something, Wood of Brambles is a good me. start. But it is going to require at least this fairy here to evolve. You're done for. I'm so sparkly. It's a pity that their effects get to go off first. If, if my Ceres effect went off first, definitely would have been a much better counter. Although I still would have died to that just due to how it goes, but not too bad. Especially when I can now play Sirdwin this turn, giving me a Zeus. So a 5-4 body, a 5-10 on 5. Yeah, I can be pretty happy with that for an Evolve. I mean, it gives us a total stat line of 10-14 on turn 5. So definitely worth it. Just requires a nice setup. This is going to eat a lot of stuff from this Forest player. And considering our hand, all we need to do is buy one more turn and we can go into Underworld and that really should secure us most of this game. That Fairy Driver though is actually a great play. 
But again, it's going to take all their resources here to actually be able to remove this. So them just pumping that in. So we basically have a free turn to play something. I get the Pure Hearted Singer, I decide to go for that over the Corpse Lord at this point, mainly because I really just wanted to get some draws in, really set up my turn 8 would have been nice. Getting a second Pure Hearted Singer off the draw isn't too bad either though, because it does at least allow us to flood this out a little bit. This 5-4 Impro though is going to be absolutely swallowed by Underworld Watchmen, so not going to get much use out of that card for sure. For Definitely like limits their aggressive pressure that this forest player can deal now. No! I'm taking you with me. I lost. So not too bad. So why well, those games worked out pretty well for this deck, I don't know whether I would recommend it to you guys overall, of course it's definitely a steep learning curve and it is an unlimited deck. I will have some more unlimited decks coming of course while the Grand Prix is running, as I mentioned at the start of the video. It's going to probably be unlimited week at the moment, we're just going to roll with it and go see what else is out there in unlimited. I don't tend to play it much, but since we've got this Grand Prix, I thought we'd at least give Unlimited a fair shot, so expect to see probably a few aggro decks pop up, maybe even a couple more control decks. I'd love to try and fit in a Seraph deck if you guys are interested in that. If you want to see any of my other Unlimited videos, I have, I think, two currently that are relevant, which would be my Elena Haven deck, which you can find on the channel, and my previous video, which was the Runecraft video, which could do with a little bit of adjusting to make it a little bit better, but I think it does a solid job on its own. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. As always, you will find the deck list to this deck in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.